Well, President Biden's so-called infrastructure plan has faded from the news since Senator Joe Manchin talked about a true bipartisan effort uh, and East Coast lawmakers making demands about a salt tax and, and getting rid of that, making adjustments. But I suspect there is probably a lot of horse trading going on at this very moment. This thing will burst back on the scene probably next week. Joining me now to discuss American Action Forum, President Douglas Holdake. And Douglas, you know, you wrote a lot of great pieces this week about this, including one that said the taxes included to pay for the plan, the American Jobs Plan, seem more intended to punish the corporate community than a thoughtful way to cover the cost of new spending. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, if it were an infrastructure plan, and there, there's an infrastructure plan in there somewhere, but about four or five hundred billion dollars worth, it would be paid for using user fees. That's the traditional method in the, the United States. The federal government's used it extensively. That way, those who impose the costs on the highways and the ports and the airports are actually reimbursing for the, for the damage they create. That's the way to do it. That's not this. This is, let's get the corporations, and what's the, the headline way to do that? We'll jack up the top rate. The basic lesson of tax policy is make the base as broad as possible and keep rates low. This is exactly the opposite. So we've seen what happens when our top rate is way out of line with the world. We lose headquarters all the time. Buried in there is a provision that says, oh, yeah, you might try to run away. We're going to tax you as if you were still in the United States. So we're locking the, the, the jail door. And we're going to raise the rate on global earnings, earnings outside the U.S., from 14 to 21 percent. So we're going to make sure we get the money no matter where you are or where your profits are. It's just not sensible tax policy. It's going to backfire. Well, do you think then that, I mean, deliberately, this, this punitive action, is it more part of a social justice movement to rewrite the wrongs of yesteryear? Uh, you know, we know President Biden's a big union guy. And they, it, because I feel like it's been this way for some time, Douglas, and they usually use it under the guise of economic policy. But I just feel like it, and even for them, it never was intended to be economics at all anyway. But they have to respect the economics. I, I, I get the politics of, you know, sort of making big corporations the bad guy. And uh, there is a social justice movement out there that has a, a whole series of grievances they wish to litigate. But the reality is that we are tied together in, in the U.S. economy. And when we did analyses of the Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders wealth taxes, taxes on a small number of very affluent Americans, but at very draconian rates, the lesson was that 60 cents out of every dollar of wealth tax got paid for by American workers. Because when you don't uh, um, accumulate capital, when you don't innovate, you don't get productivity increases, and they don't get a raise. Right. This is the same recipe in disguise. Yeah. And so they, they might okay. think they're not getting the little guy, but they are. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I've seen that, and you pointed out many others, but uh, they're, they're going to keep going down that path. Hey, let me squeeze this in with about a minute to go. The administration making some headway, I, I think, with respect to broadband, right, being part of modern-day infrastructure. Sure. They still got a ways to go in elderly care. But you wrote that uh, the approach <laughs> is wrong and expensive, right? So, so what are they getting yeah. wrong about broadband? So broadband is modern infrastructure. I'm sold. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that at all. And especially during the pandemic, making sure that every American child could connect with school and learn was, was, was a real issue. So let's take the folks who gave us the most reliable um, Internet on the globe and make it a little bit better. Those are private Internet service providers. They're not allowed to get any of this money. We're going to plow it into not-for-profits and municipal broadband who are wedded to technologies that exist now but don't innovate. And we're going to threaten price controls on the private guys to make them make their broadband cheaper. That, that's really wrongheaded. Build on the success yeah. that we've had yeah. and get the broadband to everybody. Yeah, I think you said a four-letter word, though, private sector. Hey, Douglas, it's been too long. Great seeing you and great work. Always appreciate reading your stuff almost every morning. Thanks a lot.